Hey everybody, how's it going? Look what it is. Clutch set. On the way to work yesterday, I was driving down 40. Well, actually going down 109. There's times where I was kind of going uphill. I'd give it a little bit of gas. I noticed my RPMs climb a little bit, but the Jeep wasn't pulling. I knew the clutch was on borrowed time. I was hoping it'd last a little bit longer until I'd done my engine swap, but it's not going to happen. Uh, going to the Tennessee Dirt Devil in about three weeks, and I don't need a clutch to get dumped right in the middle of a big, I don't know, creek bed or rocks or whatever it is we're going to be playing on. So, my son's coming in from the Air Force that week, too, so I, just, I don't want no downtime. I want everything running good so we can go out and play. So, today's video, as you may guess, we're changing the clutch. So, uh, first things first, let's get this uh, Jeep. Raider. Uh, she's sitting here. I've got her up next to my shop, and a friend of mine, Wayne's on his way. He's gonna help me drop his transmission. I've got a big jack I can do it with, but it's just helpful if you got another set of hands. But first thing we need to do, since we're not gonna have the transmission in it, you can't leave it drive, you can't leave it reverse, prevent it from rolling. So we gotta get something to chalk the wheels up so it doesn't roll. All right, anything you got laying around, heck, I use bricks, I use rocks, I use anything I can find. But you don't want to get run over. So there you go. Chalk it up so you don't get squished. We got to drop that starter. First thing you got to do is look, hook that battery. All right, we got the negative side out for any sparks and stupid stuff from happening. All right, your positive cable, mine happens to be running through the loom down here. And I can split the loom, bring the starter wire and all down. Or I could just take one nut off the starter and just bring it down. So if you look right down here. We've got to take that wire off the starter, take this battery cable off. Then we're going under. Alright, starter. Now we gotta to get to the drive shaft. If you guys refer back to one of the videos whenever I was doing the U-joints, you know that you gotta take out these four bolts. Okay, rear drive shafts out, front drive shaft, same size, four bolts, pull them out. Okay, we're about to drop the skid plate. You got here, here, and well, actually that one's missing. Then you got three more on the other side. Then you crawl on under here, and you got right here in the middle where it supports the uh, transfer case. Don't forget that little torque arm right there. But what before you drop the transfer case, you want to make sure you put something underneath the, oh, your oil pan here to support it because all the weight's going to come down. And before you put your jack stand or something under the oil pan, get you a big board, piece of metal plate, something uh, to put across that oil pan. Because when you drop the weight down, it, if you had just a jack stand, you could end up denting your pan pretty bad. So, when we get to that point, I'll show you what I did. These bolts right, this right here is a torque arm that sits up above here. Where's that? See where my thumb's at? When the motor torques, it pulls up on that boat right there. It cushions the rotation of the transmission and transfer case and all that stuff. First thing you want to do is take that off. You want to take these two out, which holds your transmission mount, your uh, transfer case mount, and all that. Then after you get them out, then these. Now be careful when the transfer case comes down. It's not exactly a featherweight. So either have help bringing it down or put your jack under it when you break it loose to bring it down. Okay, see on the tail shaft of the transmission there, I've got a jack. We're picking up the tail shaft of the transfer case, and which will give us an air gap between the transfer case and the skid plate. But once we get it jacked up high enough, I'll go up front. Notice how the jack stand's set underneath the oil pan. Now I have a piece of plate right there distributing the weight across the bottom of the oil pan. What that's going to do for us is it's going to give us that gap we're going to need to pick the transfer case up off the skid plate. The skid plate's all broken loose. It's actually ready to drop short of uh, just totally unscrewing everything. But in order to do that, we had to have the transmission up and supported because when the transfer, once the skid plate leaves, it's got nothing just hanging there. So we got to support the back end of the block from right there. So just be sure that you put something across that oil pan because you will cave in your oil pan. The oil pan will hit the bottom of your pickup tube and you will get no oil. And it makes all kinds of crazy noise when that happens. So that's where we're at. See you in a moment. All right, skid plate's dropped. Here's the transmission mount I was talking about for the people who didn't know what I was talking, what I was referring to. 
this is a new one. Actually, I put this transmission mount in before I started shooting the YouTube thing. And this torque arm is right here is what I was referring to. Whenever you let go of the clutch or whatever, this whole transmission assembly right here rocks. This supports that, keeps from rotating too far and stressing out your uh, motor mounts up front and keeps a lot of the vibrations down inside the Jeep also. Now, first thought was my exhaust. I got plenty of room because of the body lift up above the tunnel. But just really looking it over, for those of you who don't have the body lift, go ahead and drop your exhaust. I've got two bolts up here, but I fabricated my own exhaust. So I've got two bolts up here, and over here I've got those stainless steel clamps you see right there. Two bolts there, my whole exhaust drops, and I unplug my O2 sensor, and it's easy as it can be. So to save myself some headache, I'm going to go ahead and drop the exhaust. For those of you who don't have a body lift, you'd be better off going ahead and dropping it also. Now, I don't know your exhaust, I can't exactly tell you how to drop yours, you just have to look at it and see what, where it comes apart at. So, okay, I'm dropping my exhaust, be back in a moment. Okay, exhaust out of the way. See, it gives you, gives you a lot of room, don't it? Alright, we see right now we've got the jack stand here on the trunk. I'll get there, there I am. Jack stand's under the transmission, not the transfer case at this point. Right here is where you separate the transfer case from the transmission. You got six bolts coming around the perimeter, and you got to bring your shifter loose next. And before you do that, right up in here is where you link it. You pull that, pull that loose. And don't forget all your vacuum lines and stuff for the, for the CAD connector. And your speed sensor, which hooks off the back of the transfer case also. And you got a plug over here. And we will be under somewhere in the plug. Yep, yeah, right there. Be sure you get that plug right there too. Oh, where's it? I can't see the camera. I can't see that. Okay, I found it, people. There it is. I knew there was one over here. And see, there's a perimeter of your transfer case around there, so. Alright, let's get ready to drop transfer. Okay, notice on the plug that you got up here, that's your neutral safety switch. Right up here, it bolts into the back. One of the uh, bolts that separates your uh, the adapter that goes from the transfer case to the transmission. That's where you're going to have to unhook it. Unhook, unplug it there, and you should be free and clear. So I just want to point that out to you real quick. Alright everybody, we got the uh, we took the transmission mount off and I pulled out one of my little toys here. On our jack here, we have I have this uh, transmission adapter right here. We take put the uh, tie down straps, the little ratchet straps around the transmission. It sits flat on that plate right there. Because at one point we were looking at uh, separating the transfer case. The transfer case isn't leaking, so there's really no point in it. Not to mention it's just blatantly freaking heavy to deal with. So we're opting to bring the transmission down and transfer case all in one piece, but we're going to use this big heavy duty jack with this transmission adapter. Now if you guys want to make it a little easier on yourself and you don't have that type of tools, go ahead and separate the transfer case. Here's your bolts around this perimeter here that separates the transmission and the transfer case. Be sure to take your linkage loose and all that whenever you do that. Currently we have it blocked up right there by the oil pan. Now I showed you that, and right now we got held up by the tail shaft. Your bolts that you need to remove here around the perimeter of the bell house, you need to take them out. And be sure to unplug your vacuum lines for your CAD, uh, for your central axle disconnect up front. Speedometer cable, here's the speedometer right here. I got it unplugged, sitting off the side. And you also got your neutral safety switch on the other side. There's a bolt holding to the, uh, I'm on the wrong side to show you. but be sure on your neutral safety switch you've got a bolt that bolts to the transmission that you separate it before you drop the transmission alright we're going to get the bell housing bolts and I'm going to come back in a moment and there's a tool that you use to separate this uh, pressure line and I'll show you how to do that here in just a moment but bell housing bolts just trace them around you'll see them so see you in a moment ok I'm going to give you guys a quick shot of the top side i can get the plug wires out of the way let me get down a little bit See right back down inside here. If you follow where well, the head joins the block, back in behind there is one of your bell housing bolts. And down here, right there, be sure you get those bolts. It goes through the flex plate into the transmission, so you gotta be sure you separate them. Because that is behind your flywheel. So if you don't pull those off, you try to back the transmission out, 
it's going to catch on the flywheel. You're not going to move that transmission at all, or at least not far anyway. So I just want to point that out to you guys real quick. Okay, here we're looking at the fluid line coming down from the master cylinder where your clutch pedal is, coming down to the throwout bearing. This collar right here locks up inside this sleeve right here. So what we got to do is this collar's got to be slid forward, which will unlock it in here and allow you to pull that out. So if you get lucky enough, you can push it in just a little bit, like such. Then what you got to do, you got to get this tool that comes with your clutch kit, get it in behind there. Then you work it and just kind of leverage it a little bit, keep pushing in it as you go around it. That will separate, as you see right there, see it just came right out. There you go, see, Wee, that was easy wasn't it? Just to save yourself from tasting uh, brake fluid, I'm going to take a couple sandwich bags, wrap your sandwich bag around this and around that, zip lock them to it, and therefore it might prevent you from uh, tasting a little brake fluid. So that's how you pop that little bastard cylinder and your throw-out bearing. Okay, what we're looking at now, okay, here's that throw-out bearing we just popped that line loose. If you go way up top, see where that electrical line comes down, right here? That's your crank position sensor. Two bolts right there. Uh, let me look at what size they are. 716 is what the ratchet I'm using. You're going to take that out so you don't damage it. So, coming up soon, the video on how to test that to make sure it's good. Okay, enough of my plugs and videos. Take it off. Alright, you see where we use the little jack adapter thing here on the jack, and we just simply slip. Tied a little strap onto it, pulled it from the back, slid it straight back. Now we got a big, huge gap. Right here's your clutch assembly, pressure plate, flywheel, throw out bearings up inside here. You see where it's right there. And uh, that is actually an aftermarket throw out bearing. That is not the factory one. So what's been changed before? Yep. And people, the reason I say that is if you look, see these straps right here? Those come on the replacement ones because the strap holds all that stuff compressed when you put it in. You press on the pedal, it pops these straps loose so you don't have to hold all this stuff together. Now, remember the uh, crank position sensor that we take out way up top up here? See these little notches in this ring right here? It reads these notches as it comes around. That's how it knows where the position of the crank is. It, it, each time it hits one of those gaps, it's a uh, sensor that kind of like a magnetic sensor. It, it, it creates a uh, electrical pulse every time it passes these gaps, and it tells the computer where the rotation of the crank is. So now what we got to do around the clutch? See these bolts right here? These bolts have got to go. Those are next. All right, these flywheels can be a major pain in the tail to break these bolts loose because your crank wants to turn. Now you got a couple of choices what you can do. You got one hand here that can hold the wrench while you go against this one. One person keep prevents the flywheel from turning while the other one breaks it loose. And you kind of get to the point where you've got the last one, you've got them all loose, and except for one, so what you can do at that point, you can get you a screwdriver or another wrench or whatever. These dial pins sticking out the side right here, I'm using a four way for demonstration, but if you had a flat, flat head, you lodge it between that dial pin into the flywheel or a pry bar or another wrench, whatever. It prevents that flywheel from turning while the while you can turn the wrench to break the last bolt loose. But once you get all those bro the bolts are broken loose, they're pretty easy to come out once you get them done. So, a little quick trick. All right, everybody, there's the old one to come out. And if you catch the camera just right, you can see the different coloration here. That's where the pressure plate has gotten really, really hot. And here's the new plush plate. If you look like right here this rivet is, if I catch that angle just right, you can see the depth right there. And looking at the new one, say for instance on this rivet here, see how thin the difference in the thickness. You check your springs, kind of push your springs around sometimes. You got a loose spring, which indicates if you got a lot of chatter in your um, clutch, those springs are taking vibrate on you. And what they need to point out too, look. If I, uh, maybe this camera catch it right. Look at your fingers. Right here and here. You lay a straight edge across it. If you see some of your fingers, there's air gaps underneath them. These fingers should be all level. 
and you got some of like this right here is pretty obvious. You can see how much further down that one is. All right, see how that finger right there's so much lower. That is like a diaphragm clutch. What this is, when that is pushed in, it kind of creates a um, oil can effect. If you guys, okay, I didn't want oil can effect because the old oil cans used to be all metal. I'm showing my age, sorry, but um, it makes that popping sound. That's kind of way these uh, diaphragm clutches work. When this pushes in, it springs back and hold, it pulls the uh, pressure plate back. But what happens? These fingers start getting weak, and some of them get higher and lower than other ones, and it doesn't have an even clamping pressure going around the clutch disc. So therefore, it starts allowing things to slip, and that's exactly what was going on. It also explains why sometimes my clutch slipped, sometimes it didn't. You see that finger's quite a bit lower. Uh, I'm gonna pull my flywheel in a minute. I'm gonna show you guys. No, actually, I'm gonna go under look at my flywheel. I'll take it under let you see it. Flywheel is in really good shape. No heat cracks. And even per the Chrysler service manual, the only thing I need to do to it, because it does not have heat cracks, is I, I pull my DA out, put me some 180 grit sandpaper on it, and I'll just rough it up good, knock that glaze off. But the flywheel is in really good shape, so there's no point pulling it. So just giving you guys a quick peek at what to look for when you know you get your clutch out, what kind of shape you in. See how this is a nice pretty machine surface, glazed. You got different colors, blues, purples, and all kinds of where the heat was being generated. So, there you go everybody. Yeah, you can see, that, see how the colors are shifting. And that thing has been generating a lot of heat and you see it's hotter, it's been hotter in some areas than others because of the uneven pressure of these diaphragm fingers right here. So that's a quick how to diagnose what's wrong with your clutch once you get it out. People, look what I go through and make videos. I'm laying in bird crap. All right, I got a little ahead of myself. I want to show you guys that. See this little ring right here on my finger? That was just taken off with a flat screwdriver. Where it's located, you're looking at the throwout bearing. Right here on this little pin is the only thing that holds that throwout bearing in place. It does not take a lot because it just kind of goes along for the ride. And this right here presses against that diaphragm I showed you with uneven fingers. This pushes outward and pushes against your clutch. But once you get that right there off, this slides right off. But you gotta work the lines through here. Watch them. And work it back through the like that. Ta da! It's out. Alright, look at there, everybody. That is not how it's supposed to look. There's supposed to be a set of needle bearings inside that right there, and as you can see, they are absolutely missing. And I mentioned earlier that the flywheel looks in good shape. See how smooth it is? And basically all I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to get my DA, throw a piece of sandpaper on it, and just rough that back up and knock that glaze off. That's all you really have to do. This bearing up here, what that's for is the snout here, which is going into your transmission. This is where your clutch slides on. This goes up inside that bearing that's missing right there. And it stabilizes that input shaft so it doesn't vibrate, move up and down. Well, those bearings are gone, so what we got to do, we ran to auto parts store, get a lumber tool program, got this, and we're going to pull that baby out of there. So I can't do this with one hand, so I'll show you guys in a moment. Okay, we got it position now. Those little fingers, what you do, you stick them up inside the bushing right there. We get them up inside there, you tighten, or take this handle here, it takes those fingers and expands them inside there, locks them inside the uh, bearing. Once you get a good, tie this up, good and snug, then we're going to take this nut right here, put the wrench to it. As you tighten this nut, it's going to pull out on this frame right here. But it's going to pull out on this, pushing this in. It'll pull that bearing right out of there. Alright, y'all seen in the last shot that I had this different tool to pull that bearing out. Just to give y'all a heads up, that last shot, that tool didn't work that crap. So, went after another one. This right here should do a lot better. These are I've used before, they, they work. So, here we go. Okay, basically, what we got here, this thing right here goes beside there. You got a set of fingers that spread that lock on the back side of that bearing. Then you take your slide hammer, bang it back like that. It pops that bearing right out of there. Okay, we got that thing out of there. You see how it hooks into the back right here. It just goes in, hooks like that, you just take a slide hammer, pops right out. Now here, 
is what the bearing is supposed to look like. So now we got to put this one in. All right, let's put the new bearing in. What you use, if you see just real close, you see inside there, we've got plenty of grease inside there. Axle grease, whatever, you just want a good heavy grease inside there. Uh, how to put it in? Well, there you go. You take your socket and it fits the outer perimeter of the bearing right there. And you try to make sure it's straight as possible. You tap it in a little bit, it'll kind of see itself, but then you pull your socket back and look at it, make sure it's straight. If the bottom is sticking out further than the top, place your socket, tap it on the bottom part of the socket, and it'll line it back up. And once you get it straight, you drive it home. I didn't hit it twice. Alright, you see the bearing. We're see, the only thing you gotta do is have it flush with the back end of the crank. You don't have to recess it or anything like that. Just make sure it's flush because that goes beside of it. If you got stick it outside the crank too much, it bombs out back here, you're gonna destroy the bearing. And if you sink it in too deep, you don't have enough surface bear surface on the uh, shaft here to support the whole input shaft. So now we put the clutch in. Okay, upon the last shot, we got the uh, pilot bearing set. Now we got the alignment tool. What we're going to do with this is, you look at your flywheel, you look at your clutch plate. This side, there's no riding. You look right here, it says flywheel, flywheel side right here. This goes against this. So what we're going to do is, your alignment shaft here, go through the splines here. Slide that through. Then we come up here. Uh, look at the camera here, just right. Got to line it up. That shaft has got to go right inside that pilot hole. And what, you'll know what you get set because it actually. Let me switch hands on the camera here. You see, once you get set in there, it slides right in. And it holds the clutch plate centered when inside the flywheel. So, the next thing we do, we take the pressure plate, we got to set that up over top of this and get, get the holes lined up. You got okay, my voice sounds funny. I just smacked my head on the transmission. Ow. All right. We got the, uh, oh, seriously, I did. <laughs> here's the uh, flywheel. Sun's whitening out my camera. Uh, here's the uh, clutch pressure plate. I did knock myself stupid. <laughs> All right. There goes up against the flywheel. What you got to watch when you get up there, look at your bolt holes here. There. There. And as you see, I'm putting in the bolts right there to get one started. And you can I'll grab a bolt from down here and get another one started here. Pretty much once you get your three bolts started, the, everything kind of holds itself in place. But what you do not do, you get all bolts tight on the pressure plate before you pull this out. Otherwise, that clutch plate slip on you and you've got a mess when it comes time to put the transmission back in. So let me get these tightened up. Be right back. My phone is making all kinds of weird noises. <laughs> okay, we have the uh, clutch plate, pressure plate all tightened up. And what you can do, you have one person over here like this, those dial pins sticking out. Like your screwdriver with that dial pin into the teeth here of the flywheel, it'll help prevent it from uh, rotating on you. See how it's got it locked in right there? It locks into the teeth here against that dial pin. And as I'm taking the ratchet, I'm pushing like this, it locks the flywheel in place so it holds it in place to keep from rotating. Okay, once you get all the pressure plate bolts tightened up real well, then, and only then, do you pull your alignment shaft out. So once you get all that done, the sun's blocking out the camera here. Pull that out. So now the clutch plate won't move. So the next thing we got to do is put the uh, throw-out bearing into the transmission before we slide the transmission back in place. Which is over here. Okay, here's your throw-out bearing. You got two hydraulic lines. Before you put them in, your hydraulic lines need to be lined up like this right here because they're both going through the same hole in the transmission. Notice these straps right here. Do not break them loose yet. Once you get the throw-out bearing in, you push, you get all the fluids in it, you push on the pedal. The throw-out bearing extends outward. It breaks these straps for you. Don't remove them. The transmission takes care of all that. 
or the clutch pedal, whatever. And this bearing here actually is separate from that whenever you receive the new bearing for the pump. Notice you got a seal right there. What you do, sit that over top of that. This machine surface right here goes against your uh, clutch plate. Push it, you feel it snap in a little bit because it gets just past that little rubber lip right there, a little rubber O-ring. That holds it in place. So once you get it in place, the uh, clutch plate, the uh, fingers, pushes against this, holds the thing in place for you. All right, let's go ahead and put it in. Okay, here's the throwout bearing ready to go in. These two lines, one of them is your main fluid line coming from your uh, master cylinder up top. This is your bleed line. They both got to be fed through that hole right there to the outside of the transmission. Make sure it goes onto your shaft here correctly, which is pretty straight up simple. You just kind of put it there. That slides through like that. And it's not rocket science. Okay, now what we got down here at the bottom, there is a pin right here. There's a hole right here. Rotate just enough that it goes over top of that pin like that. Now, you thought that branch pretty much done. Now, I'll be right back. I lost my key. I'll be right back. Uh, okay, I'm back. Okay, there's that little pin right there sticking out that the throw out bearing sits over top of. Here's that little key that you see me pry off with a screwdriver earlier. Basically, put it over top of that little pin and should go on as simple as pushing it. Sometimes you may have to get a small socket to actually push it back on. But I think I'm going to get lucky with this one. Yeah, there it goes. It just snaps in right over top of it. I had the camera all jacked up. But anyway, see, so it just snaps over top of it, locks in place. So therefore, the throw bearing stays in place until you get up into the, maybe back up to the bell house, into the block. So now all we got to do is slide this baby back in place. Oh, crap, it's about to rain. Well, everybody, you can see I've got the transmission back up in place. Uh, the trick to it is you cannot see the uh, alignment shaft, the input shaft going to the clutch. It is a serious trick. Uh, what I ended up doing is taking two fingers here, two fingers up top, and just kind of as uh, my dad was pulling toward the front, as you see that little strap had tied onto the jack. Uh, then we were taking a line and pulling it forward, taking my fingers until we got the transmission and the uh, engine level, then turning the crank from up front or turning from the back, which way we get hold of it, and finally the uh, splines fell in place. Take the bolts here, it pulled the transmission up in place, and now we're just putting it back together. So, there is really not much need me uh, shooting a video of how it goes back together because assembly is just reverse of disassembly. So, anyway, I'm gonna get this thing back together because it is starting to thunder and I'm about to get wet. So, I'll close this in a bit. Alright, everyone, I can't let you go without, without showing you how to bleed this clutch. Basically what we got here, we got a 916 wrench on this part here and it breaks against the transmission and you can use a quarter inch wrench on this little fitting right here. Darn if I know where my quarter inch wrench is at the moment, find everything but that. But I'm using one of these through sockets made by Cobalt which works really well for stuff like this because you get a, you know, a good grip all the way around the fitting. And plus, I don't know if the camera's going to catch it or not, you see straight through it. So the fluid actually goes through the line. It works really well for bleeding brake lines and stuff like that because it doesn't strip out the fit and this is bad. Alright, so I got uh, Wes up top right now. He's going to press in the clutch. And you holding it? Yep, yep. Alright, so now what we're going to do is just going to simply crack this right here lightly. Now if you do it too hard, it's going to shoot fluid everywhere. And well, my camera's right there, so I'm going to take my time with it. Brake fluid video cameras don't mix. So you take real lightly, turn it, and you'll see the pressure start bleeding down. You see the fluid start coming out, starts so bleeding down. And he'll let me know when it hits the floor. It's on the floor right now. Uh, he says it's on the floor. So now what we're going to do is reverse the ratchet. And the whole time I'm tightening this up, he doesn't lift his foot. You've got to hold the clutch down. Because if you lift the clutch while you've got this valve right here opened, it'll suck air back into the line. So then you hold the wrench here and just snug it up a little bit. And then he's going to let out the clutch. And 
give it another pump. It's on the floor again. All right. And then we're going to crack this valve. We're going to bleed it again. And just kind of let it ride until you see the fluid come out. Now, the first time you bleed it, it may take you three, four, five times before you actually start getting fluid coming out of it. But once you get fluid coming out, you'll see it spit in the air and it'll make all kinds of bubbles. And once you get enough but solid fluid coming out, that's when you know you're good to go. Now I'm going to reverse my ratchet. And anyway, he's still got the clutch pressed in. He has not turned loose yet. It's still on the floor. Oh, crap, I can't. I got brake fluid. I can't hold on to it. It's all slick, I can't hold it. Now, there we go. Now I got the valve tight again. And we're going to do it one more time. You got it tight? It's tight. Alright, so I'm going to pump it. He's pumping it. It's on the floor. Alright, he's holding the clutch down. We're going to crack this valve one more time. And you see the fluid just come shooting out of there. Okay, now we're down to nothing but drip, which means the pressure is now bled completely off the line. And brake fluid does not taste good, by the way. And I'm going to tighten it back up. Now, one thing you really, really need to be careful, and I'm going to go up top here just a moment and show you, is that the brake uh, reservoir, the uh, fluid reservoir for the clutch is a little bitty tiny thing. It is very easy to uh, bleed this thing too many times. The next thing you know, you run your reservoir out of fluid and you just suck the air back in the line and you got to start all over again. So I'm going to go back up top here in a moment. You can turn loose the clutch now. And uh, so I'm going to go back up top here in just a moment and I'll show you the uh, reservoir where you put the fluid in. Be right back. All right, when we was under the Jeep and bleeding out the uh, clutch, one thing that you always want to make sure of first, here's your master cylinder, here's your brake booster, right back here and behind it is where you feel your clutch at. You want to make sure that is absolutely full when you start. And about every third time you crack that bleeder, and see notice how low it, how, notice how low it is. Oh, wow, I've got an echo, that sounds cool. Notice how low it is? That's because that's what, about three, four bleeds we did down there? It will knock that thing off that quick. That's how much fluid you lose. And if you was to happen to drain that too much and you get, and empty out your uh, little master cylinder for your clutch, you'll be putting air right back into the system and you got to start all over again. So about every second, third, you have somebody up top check it for you or come out and look at yourself. Let's see. Uh, we've got all the air out of the system. Now I can top this back off of fluid, and I have got a solid clutch pedal. Let me switch hands on you real quick. All right. And it don't take a whole lot because you don't want it too full. Because inside the cap here, you got this little rubber boot. You put too much in it, that little rubber boot is going to push the fluid back out of the master cylinder. So you just top it off, and it's probably about a quarter inch from the top. And those of you who may ask what you fill it up with, you just use the same fluid that you use in your master cylinder for your brakes. It's dot three brake fluid. That's all there is to it. All right, there's how you bleed the clutch. Okay, you've seen from the start. You know when we start breaking this baby down and you miss some of the chaos in between all of it, all the cussing and I want to keep it rated PG and trust me it turned rated all really quick. Uh, not the easiest clutch I've ever done but not the hardest either. Try changing the clutch in a 96 Camaro. Those suck, okay? Uh, see him? Me and him. Two days. It sucked. <laughs> but anyway. Two days on that Camaro because you got to take that transmission down in three pieces. Okay, that's just no story. We're not going to get into that nightmare. I'll start having seizures and stuff. But anyway.
It's not fun. Just leave <laughs> us two days delusional, 2 a.m. So, anyway, there you go. That's how you do the clutch. So, everyone, you guys are giving me some killer comments. Um, lots and lots of sharing. I've seen a lot of that going on lately. I really appreciate that. So, share the knowledge. Share your videos to your Facebook, your YouTubes, Twitter, whatever type of social media you got. Share it. Spread the knowledge. So, everyone... Thanks for your comments. Thanks for all, everything you guys have been doing for me. And, well, we're going to pull apart again. Peace out. See y'all.